welcome to another edition of Active Living. We got our good friend Joe Johnson here today. Joe's our traveling man. He's been traveling out west. He's been out to the studios again, out to Hollywood, and he's got a lot to tell us about his experiences on this trip. Anyone who knows me knows that uh, Los Angeles, Hollywood is my happy place. And so when I have some vacation time to use up, I usually go out west. People ask me, why don't you go to the Bahamas? Why don't you go somewhere tropical? And I don't think there's as much to do over there. LA has it all, the beaches, the studios, uh, all sorts of things to see and do. That's so right. you did go to the beach, didn't you? I, I did, yeah, yeah, of course, you gotta go to the beach. You know, when, when Joe goes out there, uh, you have a moving story on Facebook <laughs> because he posts everything on Facebook. So I, I know a little bit about what he did this trip, but I think we're gonna learn a lot more this time. It's funny when I come back, like people in the community that I consider acquaintances, they'll, they'll be like, I really enjoyed your posts. And I'm like, oh, okay. So yeah, yeah. Right. a lot of people uh, wait with bated breath to see what I post next. So yeah, a lot of good stuff out there, I'll tell you. Yeah, it was not disappointing. Another fun trip. I uh, got to see some new things that I haven't done. I discovered some new things, so that's always exciting. You know, there are things that I enjoy doing over and over and over again, like visiting the Hollywood sign. Um, but it's always fun when I discover something new that I've never done. Yeah. You did TV shows too, didn't you? Did you go to see Kimball this time? We did, Jimmy yeah. Kimmel, yeah, so yeah. So we'll, we'll talk about that in Fantastic. a second. Um, the first thing, right out of the gate, this is something I'd always wanted to do. So uh, on this slide that you have here, uh, on the left side, those are images from various TV shows and movies. There are these beautiful hallways at LAX. They have these mosaic tiles. And so many films and, and uh, TV shows have filmed in those hallways, I've lost count. But examples that you see on the screen, we got Mad Men, we got a couple of Quentin Tarantino movies, right. the movie Airplane, uh, and of course you recognize Columbo and the Rockford Files. They've all filmed in those mosaic tile hallways at some point, but I had never ever been in them. As really? often as I've flown to LAX, I've never been in them. So my sister, who tagged along with me for the first few days of this trip, she works at Detroit Airport, and she has uh, colleagues all over the country. She arranged for a, a mini personal tour of LAX, and I was able to finally get into those beautiful hallways, and they're stunning. It's just a work of art. Is this uh, a restricted area? Some areas are restricted, really? but to see those tunnels, you have to fly certain airlines uh, that would then allow you okay. to pass through these tunnels to get to gotcha. the, the luggage uh, right, carousel. Right. Um, so uh, I guess I've never flown those airlines that have allowed me to get access. Um, you also see me standing in front of what they call the theme building. And anytime you see this theme building in television or film, you know it's LAX, right. you know it's Los Angeles International Airport. And I actually got to go inside for the first time. There's not much to see in there. There used to be a restaurant, okay. very space age, futuristic sort of a thing. Uh, that closed up years ago and really? is no longer open to the public. Talking to the employees there though, they would love to see some multi-millionaire come in there, buy it and get that restaurant up and going again. So that, that whole facility that you see, the, the, the big fancy uh, dome type of structure, yeah. it's not even being used? It's not even functional. Right really? now it's a big old piece of art. That's all is that it right? is. Yeah, hmm. yeah. I didn't know that. I so that it was, was the airport. <laughs> yeah, and so it was a bit of a thrill for me to finally get to see it uh, more than just flying in and flying yeah, out. So great. that was kind of neat, that was fun. And so the, we went immediately from the airport. Our next stop was a tour of uh, Sony Pictures Studios. Now, these studios changed names over the years. And at one time, uh, Sony Pictures used to be MGM. A long history. There's a soundstage in, in the top middle photo there, uh, soundstage 15, I believe it is, uh, is where Munchkin Land was in The Wizard of Oz. Oh, really? And they tell me that the trap door that the Wicked Witch falls through is still there. Uh, unfortunately, we couldn't get inside because they were filming a new moon landing project in there. So the interior of that soundstage looked like the moon. Uh, we weren't able <laughs> to get inside there, but a um, lot of history there. As we're waiting to take the tour, you'll see the two photos on the left. I'm inside the Seinfeld apartment. So oh, wow. you get to take some uh, photo opportunities inside the Seinfeld apartment before the tour even begins. It was just sort of a waiting area, which was a lot of fun. 
Uh, we got to see the Jeopardy set. Um, the one that I'm standing behind is the older uh, contestants uh, stage there. Right. Uh, they right. moved that. They have a new one there, but they let us pose in front of the older one. Nice. And then they had some vehicles on display. One of my favorites is the Ecto-1 from the original Ghostbusters. That's the original Ecto-1 from the very first Ghostbusters with Bill Murray and all those right, guys. Right. So, uh, I, as you probably know, I get a big kick well, out you're of seeing that. You're a car guy. You're kind of a car guy, right? Yeah, and they had some other cars on display. They had Ricky Bobby's race car from a movie called Talladega Nights. And there's a TV show called Breaking Bad. They had the Meth Lab RV on display. Really? So I get a kick out of seeing that sort <laughs> yeah, of stuff. Right. Yeah, right. So uh, I really recommend the Sony Pictures Studio Tour. It's only one of about four studios in L.A. that even do tours anymore. There's Universal, Warner, Paramount, and Sony Pictures. So how long does a tour like that last? A about couple two hours. hours. Two hours um, yeah. yeah, some of them are just a walking tour. Some of them you ride on a cart. Right. Universal's a little different because it's part of the theme park admission. So you have to pay like a hundred bucks for entry to the theme park, and then one of the attractions okay. is the tour. I wish you could just pay to do the tour separate, but apparently it's just part of the theme park park attractions. It's called so. enhancing revenue. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> they, they, that's how they get you, as yep. they say. Um, now this is kind of an interesting little story here. Uh, I, my my sister and I, when we were kids, we were big fans of the movie Grease. And right. they filmed a lot of Grease at Venice High School. Um, so Venice High School in the movie was Rydell High School. Yep. Football field and, and uh, bleachers were used uh, in, in various scenes from Greece when Danny's running track or they're singing Summer Nights. There's an outdoor cafeteria area where the girls sing Summer Nights. Um, so they filmed extensively on the grounds. But one thing I wanted to get back and see is this statue that is in front of the, the high school. The story goes that when a young, I think her, her maiden name was Myrna Williams, when she was a student at the school, there was a famous art teacher who taught art classes at Venice High School. And he used this young Myrna Williams to pose for a statue oh. and some other students. And that's the original statue you see in the top right corner. Um, that Myrna Williams grew up to be Myrna Loy, fa a famous movie star. She right. was in the Thin Man series, did a lot of movies with William Powell and Clark Gable and stuff oh. like that. Um, well, almost immediately rival high schools would, would vandalize the statue. It was made of oh. concrete or something of course. originally. <laughs> and it got so out of hand that a rival school once taped dynamite to the statue and blew its head off. Oh no! And so it was in constant state of repair and replacement over the years. And uh, additional artists would come on and they would have molds on hand to recast parts that had been blown off. Eventually, um, I think around 2006, 2007, uh, they, they put a, a bronze statue on, in its place. And that's what you see on the left side of the screen. It still looks like Myrna yeah. Loy, and I think it's, uh, it's withstanding the, uh, the vandalism <laughs> a little the bit better blast. than the other. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. But it's so neat when you take a good look at it that it the statue right, does yeah. look like famous actress Myrna Loy. So oh. really cool backstory to that school and that statue. Here's another thing I've never done before. Um, I like to visit filming locations. Mm -hmm. And a friend of mine recommended that I track down a, a building that you see in every episode of Fantasy Island. Um, it's at the beginning of every episode, the plane arrives, Tattoo, the little fella, yeah, yeah. he goes up the into plane, this bell plane. tower. <laughs> yep, he rings the bell, he goes, the plane, the plane. <laughs> well, that is a structure known as Queen Anne Cottage. So I was able to track it down. What I didn't realize is that it's in a park that you have okay. to pay admission to. And the park is called the Arboretum in Arcadia, California. So I said, well, if I get to see the building, I'll pay admission to, to go into the park. Well, the park was breathtaking. And you see these images on the left side. Mm -hmm. um, it has a rose garden. It has oh, wow. plants, all kinds of exotic plants, from bamboo to redwood trees to every palm tree you could possibly imagine. Uh, the place was stunning. And it had peacocks just roaming the ground. Really? And they were amazing <laughs> to look at. 
Um, so that turned out to be a pleasant surprise. Uh, after we walked through the park a little bit, we arrived to the Queen Anne Cottage and got some pictures of the building that was used in Fantasy Island. Nice. So that oh. turned out to be a nice bonus. Yeah, very good. Yeah, and, and the flowers are still in, are in bloom this time of year out there. I, apparently so, yeah. Those, those oh. roses were just spectacular out nice. there. Just every, every type of rose you could imagine, every color. So while we were at the Arboretum, again, this is something new that I accidentally stumbled onto, right across the street from the Arboretum is Santa Anita Park. It's a racetrack. Racetrack, right. Now, the, one, the main reason that I was interested in going to it is that its south entrance appeared on film as Wally World in the movie Vacation with Chevy Chase. So we went, we found the entrance. I took some pictures of the entrance. <laughs> and while we were standing at the entrance taking pictures, some people approached us and said, would you like a free pass to go in? And we said, oh, are there races here today? <laughs> and turns out there were. So we got in for free and I was blown away. The Santa really? Anita Park has an amazing history, a lengthy history. Uh, in the bottom right corner there, you see all the movie stars of right. the day would come out to watch the races. And in the top right corner, Seabiscuit ran oh, yeah. Santa Anita Park. I think he ran his last race at Santa Anita Park. So um, but the real question is, did you make any money? My sister <laughs> won a little bit of money uh, on the first race. Unfortunately, we had to meet family for uh, oh, a barbecue. Okay. <laughs> so we stayed just, we had lunch there. We watched the first race. It was really cool to see. And yeah. I definitely have to get back there. And if you're planning on visiting Los Angeles, take an afternoon to go to Santa Anita. Uh, you won't regret it. It has such an amazing history. The Marx Brothers filmed scenes for their movie, A Day at the Races. Okay. That's how far back this track goes. Well, so, yeah. And like I said, all the stars of the day could be seen at the racetrack watching uh, the races. So that was a new thing that I discovered and I fell in love with it and I definitely want to get back. Oh yeah. So that was a lot of fun. Now something you don't always get to experience as a tourist when you go to Hollywood is a live Walk of Fame ceremony. Oh. Uh, but it just so happens, the week that I was there, uh, a performer named DJ Khaled uh, got his star on the Walk of Fame. Whoa. And usually when a star gets uh, a star on the Walk of Fame, a celebrity gets a star on the Walk of Fame, sometimes your famous friends come along to make speeches. Now, I have to admit, I had to ask my sister who some of these people were. Some of them I recognized, some of them I didn't. But the first guy to come through the door is a guy named P. Diddy. Sometimes he goes by Puff Daddy. Yeah. His real name is Sean Combs. But when he came out, the crowd erupted. And you can see the crowd in the right photo there. Right. Uh, yeah. There are several hundred people who turned out for the event. Uh, following P. Diddy was Jay-Z, who some might know as Mr. Beyonce. Yeah. He's the husband of uh, Beyonce. And so they made some speeches, they unveiled the star, and it was just a really cool Hollywood moment to witness. My sister just was so excited to see that. So what happens when they run out of space for these stars? That's not gonna do, happen do they, anytime soon. Do they soon. take old stars away, or do they I don't just think keep building ever, up on this? Yeah, they keep adding them in, in some areas, because it, it runs the entire length of Hollywood Boulevard, and then it goes uh, east and west on uh, Vine Street. Right. And then I think it also goes east and west on Highland. So it's Hollywood Boulevard and then some cross streets. And in some areas, the stars are three wide. Okay. So there's plenty. We're not going to be running out of space. I was going to say, you know, like in 50 years, who's going to know who P. P Diddy is? <laughs> <laughs> we'll see. That's the one thing that's interesting you know? is when you walk the, the Walk of Fame, there are a lot of names here like, who's this person? Yeah, right. Uh, so, yeah, unfortunately, they get forgotten over time. And they do get damaged sometimes, too. And I hope they make an effort to go out there and replace the damaged stars. Uh, Trump's got smashed a few times. So. Oh, I can't believe that. <laughs> All right, so you asked about Jimmy Kimmel. So the Monday night that I was out there, or Monday afternoon, I should say, because they, they tape in the afternoon, uh, they record the Jimmy Kimmel show at the El Capitan Theater uh, on Hollywood Boulevard. So you have to get the tickets well in advance right. and hope you get approved. It's no guarantee you're really? going to get in. Uh, if you get confirmation that you, you're going to make the show, you don't know who the guests are yet. Uh, they usually unveil the guests just days in advance. Right. 
So a few days before flying out to California, I found out that our guests are uh, were Viola Davis, who's an Ooh, amazing actress, yeah. and Henry Winkler, who we all oh, know no as Fonzie on oh, Happy yeah, Days. Right. And he's on a new show that just premiered this week called Barry. The third season just premiered this week. Uh, one of my all-time favorites. And I've oh, yeah. met him, and he's one of the nicest celebrities you will ever meet. It's just it's great. really great to know. The Fonz. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so that was a really fun show. The two... Uh, Guests were just really entertaining and fun and funny, and it was a really good time. So, now here's a little bit of interesting history. I, I love doing the pop culture stuff and the celebrity stuff, but I also enjoy the history of Los Angeles. So I found out uh, a couple years ago, there's a, an apartment building out there called the Mauritania. And it has an Art Deco design, and it was built for Jack Haley, who played the Tin Man in The Wizard of Oz. So he owned that building for a number of years uh, as an apartment complex. Well, oh. when JFK was uh, campaigning for presidency, uh, the, the Democratic National Convention was held in Los Angeles in 1960. Right. And so while JFK stayed in Los Angeles for the convention, he had a room at the Mauritania. Well, I discovered just, just a, maybe less than a year or so ago, I found a photo of JFK sitting on the steps at the Mauritania outdoors. So a friend of mine and I were walking by and we said, let's see if we can recreate that, that photo of JFK. And sure enough, we found the exact same steps. You can see in the side-by-side -side comparison that very little has changed in all those years. And I was able to recreate the pose of JFK sitting on those steps. And it was, it was a <laughs> pretty great. moving moment. Like I sat on those steps seeing what JFK was looking at right. at the time. Right. And to think that I was in the presence of greatness. I sat where JFK sat. That was a pretty neat moment. It is. Wow. Yeah. So that was fun. Uh, this is something new I haven't done before. So in Beverly Hills, there's a street called North Roxbury Drive. And if you could imagine trick-or-treating on this street back in, say, the <laughs> yeah. 50s or even the 60s, right. there were three neighbors that all lived side by side. On the corner, in the photo in the top left corner, uh, was Lucille Ball's home. Oh, wow. And people who lived in the area would go to her house on Halloween for trick-or-treating, and she would answer the door herself and hand out candy. Oh. Next to Lucille Ball, the uh, photo that's in the middle, uh, was Jack Benny. Jack Benny was her neighbor for a long, long time. And then the third house you see in a row there uh, was Peter Falk, Columbo on TV. Yeah, right. So imagine there's no security, there's no high fences. Imagine some of the biggest stars of the day, that was their home on right a there. residential street in Beverly Hills. Nice. And I posted these pictures on Instagram and somebody replied that also someone who used to live in that neighborhood, their house has since been demolished, but Jimmy Stewart used to live okay. in the, on that block. And they said when they would trick or treat, Jimmy Stewart would answer the door and hand out candy on Halloween. Fantastic. How cool is that yeah. being a kid in, right. in LA in the 50s or yeah. 60s having these stars hand out candy on Halloween? Yeah. I just thought that was really neat. Then you could say, who's the cheapest? You know, who's, <laughs> who gave me the worst candy, right? They did say that Jimmy Stewart handed out full size candy bars. Oh, so wow. He did not skimp. That's pretty awesome. Uh, this is another thing I got to do for the very first time. It has been on my to-do list. Uh, there's a place, uh, a hotel called the Chateau Marmont uh, in right off of Sunset Boulevard in L.A. And it's a long history. I've been meaning to buy this book on it, but it's a long history. Um, its most famous story is John Belushi. John Belushi lived there in L.A., believe it or not, in one of the bungalows, and he died at Chateau Marmont oh, after a drug overdose. Okay. Uh, he, his last day of life, he was visited by Robert De Niro, Robin Williams, and there was a woman that was staying with him that fed him a lethal speedball, as they call it, wow. and he passed away at Ch Chateau Marmont. But that's just one of many, many stories of that hotel. So I kind of wandered in as if I was staying there. Right. Nobody questioned it. 
hung out in the lobby. They even brought me a Coke. Really? And I took some pictures <laughs> and hung out and just kind of soaked in the vibe of yeah, nice. all the names of people who've stayed there and passed through the, that lobby. And so they didn't throw you out. They were all very accommodating. And I, if you act like you belong there, they don't even question right. it. Right. So, That's great. Yeah. So that was a historical place that I'd always wanted to visit. And there's a couple more I'll show you in a moment. Now this was a lot of fun. This was sort of a spur of the moment sort of a thing. I was looking for something to do. My sister had flown home and people had told me about the LA County Fire Museum. So I went to go visit uh, the Fire Museum and on display at the museum are the vehicles from that old TV show, Emergency. Oh, Remember right. Emergency? Yeah, oh yeah. Roy DeSoto and Johnny Gage. Um, they have the actual vehicles that were used on the TV show. Uh, after the show went out of production, uh, it was produced by Universal, they actually donated the vehicles to the fire department and they were in service for a little while, okay. but then they got donated to a museum, uh, were fully restored and now are on display for the public to see. And I was really surprised when I said, uh, you don't really let people sit in it, do you? And they opened the door and let me sit in the uh, Squad 51 Dodge. Oh, so, nice, nice. So then after I, that was good enough, they said, well, you know, the firehouse that was seen in the TV show was, it's not too far from here. So I went to the firehouse. I was greeted by a firefighter who took me on a tour. You can see the firefighters and paramedics are having lunch in the kitchen. Nice. And the amazing thing about this is the exteriors were used on the TV show. The interiors were replicated on a universal sound I'm stage. Set somewhere, right? But the interiors of this fire station have not changed in, what, 50 years? and uh, look exactly like they did on the TV show. And I think that's deliberate. They encourage visitors to come by and it feels like you're walking onto the set of the TV show. It's that's really great. remarkable. Wow. So that turned out to be one of the highlights of the trip. That was a lot of fun. You know, there's a, there's a great museum for fire trucks down in Kalamazoo. Oh, Have yeah? you ever heard of that one? No, no, I've never been there. Yeah, it's a great one. Oh, they wow. A bunch of old fire trucks dating back to the early 1900s. Yeah. And, uh, you know. They did have some vintage ones at this museum, but I was more interested in yeah. the TV ones. The TV ones, stuff, so. right? Yeah. Now, one of the highlights, or probably the highlight of the trip, is an event called the Hollywood Show. And that's where, you know, B-listers, C-listers uh, sit at a table in this banquet facility and you pay to get an autograph or a photo with a celebrity. Uh, and I had a blast. I had Did so you? much fun. Uh, on the, the top middle photo you see there, I'm getting arrested by the guys from Chips, right, Hodge right. and John, yeah, uh, right. also known as Larry Wilcox and Eric Estrada. They really got into it and everybody <laughs> had a blast. People were laughing <laughs> watching me get arrested by these guys. That's cool. Uh, I met cast members from Back to the Future, Seinfeld, George Shakiris in the bottom left corner. He was in Gentlemen Prefer Blondes. That's him dancing with Marilyn Monroe in that photo. He was in the original West Side Story. He's a real legend in Hollywood. Right, right. Uh, I think he's in his 80s, and it's just really cool that he's still around. I was able to chat with him about Marilyn Monroe. And then in the bottom right corner, the ah. legendary Charo. <laughs> That's a favorite Coochie, one there. Coochie Coochie herself. She's still Coochie Coochie. She's still Coochie Coochie, um, huh? <laughs> yeah, and she was so much fun, high energy. Uh, I was able to start a conversation with her because she's from Spain and my mother was from Spain. Uh, so I talked to her about my mom and she pointed to the heavens and said she's smiling down at us right now. And when it came time to take the photo, she, she had she me laughing. She right on, was huh? pretty fun. <laughs> so, and then top right corner, I don't know if you remember HR Puff and Stuff. That was a Saturday morning live action program that I watched as a kid. And uh, they dug out the original costume and allowed people to pose for photos with HR Puff and stuff. So cool. I immediately turned into a six-year-old kid uh, <laughs> posing with HR Puff and stuff. So. Well, you didn't look like a six-year-old kid on the bottom right picture. There. <laughs> no. <laughs> no, I grew up quickly. Uh, <laughs> that was that, great. Yeah, so that was a lot of fun. Uh, everyone was fun and friendly, and I just had a great time. Looking forward to going back for that. Uh, the do they Hollywood do that Museum. every week or do they do that like it's, once a um, month? Or it's how they... about every three months. They had one in January, they had one in April, and they're okay. already planning the next one in July. So okay. about every three months okay. they do a new one. Yeah. Cool. So the Hollywood Museum, I've gone back to the Hollywood Museum many times. It's not to be confused with the new Academy Museum. That's a big museum that just opened last year. 
The Hollywood Museum is in the old Max Factor building, and I don't know if you know the story of Max Factor. He was, I think, a German immigrant, came to Hollywood to create makeup for the actors and actresses, right. and his product was so popular that he mass marketed it and became a millionaire. And so they preserved a lot of the stuff that was in the Max Factor building when, when he operated out of it. Um, and bottom right corner, there's some outfits worn by Mer We got Marilyn Monroe outfits in the bottom right corner, Lana Turner, bottom left corner, uh, all kinds of cool stuff like that. But then on the other floors, they have uh, exhibits that rotate pretty frequently. So okay. Back to the Future car, Smokey and the Bandit car, a, a replica of the original Batmobile, props and costumes and all sorts of stuff. Yeah. So because they keep rotating the exhibits, there's always a reason to come back. Sure. So every time I'm in LA, I go back to the, uh, the Hollywood Museum. Uh, another thing you want to see at the Hollywood Museum is they have this amazing collection of autographs. It was in somebody's personal collection and now they're on permanent loan at the Hollywood Museum. And the way they're framed, the top left corner is all the Wizard of Oz autographs. Okay. Bottom left cool. corner, Gone with the Wind. Casablanca, top right corner. Nice. Citizen Kane. And in the center, Charlie Chaplin. So this guy, in person, during the, the golden age of Hollywood, would get these autographs yeah, yeah. in person and hand them off professionally oh, framed. Nice. It was really neat to see. Uh, here's Corriganville Park, uh, north of L.A. Uh, it's a filming location. Quentin Tarantino filmed there not too long ago for a movie called Once Upon a Time in Hollywood. But in its heyday, it was a western town where they would film movies and do stunt shows. And there was so much to see and do. And um, long history there. It's really neat. And that center picture in the top, you mentioned Tarzan. Uh, that's Johnny Wise mother yeah. uh, at the top there filming a scene. So uh, long history at Corriganville uh, Park, named after Crash Corrigan, who was a stuntman at the time. Another historic location, the Hotel Roosevelt on Hollywood Boulevard. Uh, it's where people uh, saw Shirley Temple dancing with Mr. Bojangles. Marilyn Monroe posed in their swimming pool. Nice. Uh, long history at the Hotel Roosevelt. Something to see when you're in L.A. Uh, another restaurant that I enjoyed going to was the last standing uh, Brown Derby restaurant. It was in a town called Los Feliz. Um, and that's the last standing uh, Brown Derby. All the rest have been demolished. Really? Yeah. Uh, and there's the Hollywood sign. Quick note, when I took that picture at the Hollywood sign, just minutes later I met Patrick Stewart, who is Captain Picard in Star Trek and Professor X in the X-Men movies, right. and one of the biggest names in Hollywood. He was at the Hollywood sign visiting just like any other tourist. And I got to say hi. He didn't. He asked not to take any pictures, but I got to say hi, and, and uh, that was a, a really cool way to end the trip. Right. So he was hiking along with everybody else. He was out there with everybody else. Not many people seem to notice, but when I see someone, I, I know them right away. So <laughs> I called out his name. He turned. He said hi, and we chatted a little bit, and then him and his wife, Sonny, went on their way, and I went on my way and flew back home to Michigan. Great. So, yeah. Well, Joe, this has been absolutely fantastic. Another great adventure. Fascinating. <laughs> so when's your next trip? <laughs> we'll see. If, if the Hollywood show lines up some good guests, I might go back out in July, um, maybe the fall. We'll see. But um, I'm definitely looking forward to getting back there and seeing what, a, what kind of trouble I can get into. Joe, it's so great talking to you after these trips. You're, <laughs> you're, you're like a young kid, you know? You're, you're, you're all excited about this stuff. I do. And it's great. Yeah, I'm passionate great. about it, and I have so much fun. Well, thanks so much for joining us today. Sure, my it's great to great to have you on Active Living, and you are absolutely a great example of active living. Thank you. Because you, when you get a couple minutes to go west, baby, you go. <laughs> <laughs> That's right, I do. Thanks for joining us, ladies and gentlemen.